Christian Parenting. Aloha, friends. Welcome to the Boy Mom Podcast, powered by Christian Parenting and hosted by my mom, Monica Swanson. On the Boy Mom Podcast, it is our goal to provide you with practical advice and biblical wisdom for raising boys in this sometimes crazy world. You can find show notes for the podcast over at monicaswanson.com forward slash podcast. We're so glad you're here. A fast means that you are fasting from social media in order to grow social with the Lord, get social with him. And then from there with the real life flesh and blood people right in your home. So you're laying down those distractions, not just to feel better for a short season, but to grow in devotion to the Lord and the people he's put in our lives, not just our family, not just our closest circle of friends. Hey guys, you're listening to the voice of Wendy Speak. And if you've been around this podcast for a while, you know that Wendy is no stranger to the Boy Mom podcast. I think she's been on with me more than any other guest, and she always brings such encouragement and inspiration, and today is no exception. Now, you might remember Wendy from her book that she co-authored with Amber Leah called Triggers, Exchanging Parents' Angry Reactions for Gentle Biblical Responses. And she also more recently wrote the 40-Day Sugar Fast book, which has been a huge hit. It's changed so many lives. It is absolutely beautiful. And now the follow-up to that book is what we get to dive into today, which is called The 40-Day Social Media Fast. Exchange your online distractions for real-life devotion. And oh, how we need this. Guys, raise your hand if occasionally, I'm not even saying all the time, occasionally you find yourself distracted by your phone. If you ever find yourself mindlessly scrolling to the point that you can't remember why you even got on your phone or what you're looking at, but it's really just a way to numb yourself, right? It's a way to distract yourself from the pressing needs around you, the people who need you. Guys, I'm guilty. It's something I continually am working on, whether it's my laptop or my phone, whether it's, you know, a shopping app, a game or social media. I think we all relate to this to some extent. I mean, I talk to parents all the time about kids and technology and devices and social media, but I hear from plenty of moms who say, listen, yeah, my kids have issues, but I'm going to be honest. I think I've got bigger issues. And so I appreciate that honesty. And I think that's what we need to do. We all need to talk about these things and be honest. And what I love about today's conversation is Wendy's not just talking about social media, but she's asking, what do we run to on those days? Those hard parenting days, where do we run when we just want to tune out, when we want to numb ourselves or just really find a a way to get away from everything in front of us. Where do we run? And I love that. I think it's an important question. And whether it's social media or something else, I think you're going to find Wendy's words to be so encouraging. Now, before we dive in, I just want to thank you again so much for your ratings and reviews. They are so encouraging to me. I'm going to share one right here that came in a couple weeks ago from MGJ Mom. Hopefully you know who you are if you're listening. She gave me five stars and titled it, I am a boy mom with three boys. She says, Monica, I have three boys, Michael, four years, Gabriel, three years, and Jeremiah, 18 months. I love it when people introduce their boys because I just love all those names. Sally Clarkson and you are my two mentors, and I really thank God for you. Thank you so much for all the great podcasts. I'm a young mom, and I want to be very very intentional and raise kingdom warriors. You're an inspiration to me. Well, MGJ mom, thank you so much. The fact that you put me up there alongside Sally Clarkson is like a huge compliment. So I will receive that and say a big thank you. Guys, I read every review and they always encourage me. So if you haven't left one yet, feel free to pause and scroll down and leave those five stars and a couple words about what you love about the podcast right now. Okay. I'm going to have a few words to say at the very end, but without further ado, I want to let you listen in as Wendy and I talk, and she asks us, where do you run at the end of those hard parenting days? I hope you're encouraged. Well, hey, Wendy, welcome back to the Boy Mom Podcast. Thank you. You know, it's one of my favorite places to be. <laughs> well, you're definitely my the guest that has been with me longest and most times here on the Boy Mom Podcast. And I know everyone loves to hear from you. 
And today we get to talk about something really special. I'm just so excited to dive in. But in case anybody listening doesn't know you, could you introduce yourself? And then for all of those that do know you, I'm going to ask that you add something we might not know about you. So let's hear from you. <laughs> okay. The, the, the stuff that you might already know about me, that's just a quick refresher. Monica and I have been friends for quite a few years, uh, working online, writing for various ministries together. Uh, I wrote, uh, co-authored with Amber Leah, a book called Triggers, Exchanging Parents' Angry Reactions for Gentle Biblical Responses. And that's been really my my number one conversation with moms online and through books. Uh, I have three little triggers. I'm, I mean, sons. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. And they're not little anymore. Let's see, my youngest is 12. Then my 14-year-old. Yeah, I've got big triggers now. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then I have a 16-year-old, almost 17-year-old. And uh, and we're busy. We're in Southern mm-hmm. California, so just across the Pacific Ocean from from mm-hmm. Monica. And we're busy with, with sunshiny sports, just like uh, she is, and always going and always learning. We homeschool part-time through a charter and well it's full-time these days because California is still shut down but uh, that's a little bit about me and as for something you may not know before I worked as a writer before I even had children my main career was as an actress which is kind of fun but one story that I tell is I was stopping in New Line Cinema I was in the Hollywood Beverly Hills area. And I had an audition, but I had a friend who worked the front desk at New Line Cinema. So I stopped by to see my friend and tell her hello. And while I was coming in the front door, uh, a group of older gentlemen uh, wearing leather pants with long black hair Mm. were all coming in at the same time. And this one guy held the door open for me. And as I walked by, I mean, I I looked pretty fancy because I had an interview. I mean, I had an audition. Mm -hmm. So I, I looked good, but I, I, I'm not a supermodel. And so I walk by him and he said, you have the most beautiful face I've ever seen. Oh. And I laughed. I laughed and I said, you know, my mom always told me I had a pretty face, but I don't think ah. I have the prettiest face that anyone's ever seen. And oh. I laughed and shrugged it off. And it turns out that that was the, the band Kiss and they were about to start filming there. Stop. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they were about to start filming their their film with oh. New Line uh, Cinema, and oh, so they goodness. were signing all their contracts in this I don't know meeting room that you could that see is crazy from the lobby, and because it was all glassed in, and he came out and he said, "Come on in, I want you to co-sign with me." So like, like I was Stop. the witness on all of their contracts, and then I gave him my manager's card and said, "Well, you know, if there's a part that you still need to fill, and I would be a good fit for it, please give me a call." And so he called me directly. I guess he had gotten my number from my manager. Goodness, he was totally crushing on he you. Was, well, crush is a nice, pure way to say it. He was being <laughs> so inappropriate. And then he said to me, um, and I'm going to wrap it up with this. And I wouldn't usually share the story, but why not? I love it. Why he not? Said, he said, Wendy, can't you tell I have the urge to merge? No, he uh, did it. <laughs> yes, well, it turns out it's one of their lyrics to one of their songs, but I had never listened to any of their songs. Oh, so yeah, there's the story that nobody knows about me. Oh, that is, I will never forget it. That See, was when Gene you, Simmons. Gene Simmons. Oh my goodness. Well, when you've been on the podcast enough times, you have to start telling stories no one's ever heard. So <laughs> I love it. That is absolutely classic. Such a story. Okay. So we've got the basics and we're going to link to all the other podcasts that you've been on with me because there are a lot. So if people want to learn more about you, we're going to be sure to share those. But today's a big day. And now we're recording a little bit in advance, but not a whole lot. And so I just want to say right here and now, congratulations. Today is the launch day as this airs for the 40-day social media fast. Exchange your online distractions for real life devotion. This is your latest book that you have poured your heart and soul into. And I have had the chance to read in advance. And wow, Wendy, what a beautiful work you've done. Oh, thank you. I think that uh, regardless of what the content is, and goodness sakes, I hope it's good. I hope it's well received and that it really does, you know, minister to women during those 40 days offline. But just getting offline, 
I mean, it's such a profound recalibrating healthy thing for us to do. Oh, yes. And the fact that today isn't just launch day, it's also election day. And it has exactly. been such an aggressive online conversation. I think that we're all worn out from this, this time online and we all need to take a holy hiatus. And so that's really what it's about, not just the need for it, but then it's a daily um, devotional to walk you through growing in devotion during that season when you're not so distracted. Well, there's so many things that I can't wait to talk about, about your new book and this topic of social media. But before we dive in, I just would love for you to give us some context because you have written many books on many things, but they all are woven together so perfectly, I believe, in this latest book. So can you give us a little bit of context, how you came upon the social media fast book and just a little bit more about that? Yeah, absolutely. You know, it's really interesting, Monica, how they have flowed one book conversation into the next uh, I think I probably shared way back when, when we talked about our triggers, our daily triggers with our kids, that it was in a private Facebook group uh, for moms who were struggling, where I one day just asked, what are your triggers? And I didn't give an explanation. Uh, they knew exactly what that question meant. And they just started pouring them out. And Amber Leah and I were working together in that group. And we started focusing on those specific triggers instead of how do we get our kids to get their shoes on and get in the car uh, and not make us angry? Why are we getting angry? And we started going through these triggers and really turning the focus on God's word. What does God's word say about how to parent, how he parents us? And it was also in that group that I said very casually one day, what would happen if we didn't eat sugar for 40 days. I mean, we see what it does to our kids. It was more a, a detox than I think I even meant for it to be at first uh, than a spiritual fast. But what we realized was this isn't just a detox. It is an opportunity to fast. So while our bodies physically regulated and we stopped getting, you know, going through the sugar highs and then the sugar crashes, we were able to be calm and kind because of what was going on physiologically but instead of turning from sugar high to sugar high, we started turning to the most high and we found, oh, wow, this really is a fast. And as we did that over 40 days, we started asking the question, OK, what else am I turning to mm. yeah. when I should be, could be turning to the Lord? What else do we need to detox from, but also fast from? And always what I heard from people was it's my phone, it's social media, but it's my phone. It's all my devices. Those are my vices. And so after doing the sugar fast for half a dozen years, I finally wrote the 40 day social media fast mm. and the timing couldn't be better because we're to the point where we all recognize it's not affecting me in positive ways. I'm not the mom I want to be. I'm not the wife I want to be. Mentally, I'm not rested. Spiritually, I'm not resting in him. I'm, I'm taking my burdens to something that never invited me to take my burdens to it. You know, mm. Jesus said, yes. take your burdens to me. And I'm taking mm. those burdens to that mindless mm. scrolling Yes. Well, I, I just couldn't agree more. And I know that when I speak to parents and I address their kids' use of technology and social media, I often have moms come to me and say, I have to be honest, it, it's not my kids' issue nearly as much as it's mine. So I, I just think you're speaking to the heart of most people that I know actually would, would agree. So I love this. Keep going. Tell us more of that story. Well, so it was just in that group that we would, we would talk about the things that we were turning to. Uh, you know, here's another thing that we tend to turn to. We tend to turn to retail therapy when we can't mm. quite cope. Uh, you know, you've probably heard your girlfriends, if you haven't said it yourself, you know, I just need to get to Target. I just need a little break. I'm going to go to Target or I'm going to drive through Chick-fil-A and get some sweet tea, sugar mm -hmm. again, but, um, <laughs> or, or Starbucks and a, and a latte. Where else are we turning? And I'm finding that we're binging, we're consuming. And I used to think binging was just that, you know, half a pan of half baked brownies, uh, to make us feel better. Or the, or the handfuls of chocolate chips in the back of the pantry at three o'clock to get us through the hump. And then, of course, that doesn't work because it was never Sugar's job to, mm. to deal with our, our hurts and our holes, our loneliness, our, our stress. But what else are you turning to? And sugar is one, of course. Social media is one. Shopping is one. 
And, yeah. I, you know, I think about Target, that they've got that big bullseye up there. But if yeah. we turn to Target to meet our deepest needs, we're missing the Target altogether. And that's why, again, this isn't just a, a diet. You know, a diet will change your eating. A, a detox can change your phone usage, but a fast will change your life because mm-hmm. you start turning to the right thing An empty, mm-hmm. an empty self and not your empty shelf. If that's, what's causing you to go shopping, you know, you're still going to be empty. You'll have mm-hmm. a, a cart full of things, but a heart that's still just yeah. empty and, and longing for something we were made to crave and we're, we're going to things. Exactly. I was going to say, I just want to get to the heart of this because I know that you've done a lot of research and read a lot of books as you've dove into the topic of these fasts and what it is our hearts were made for. So can you speak a little bit more on that, the heart of the matter? Yes. And speaking of books that I've read, one that I really loved was Lisa Turkhurst's Made to Crave. Oh, yeah. And I mean, we can talk about the points that she mentions, or we can just camp out on the title, we were made to crave. Yes, I mean, God, God created us with this. Well, you've heard either Pascal or, or Bill Bright talk about variations of the same thing, which is we have a God-shaped hole or a God-shaped vacuum inside yes. of our hearts mm-hmm. that only he can fit and, and yep. only he can fill. And yet our tendency is to turn to all of these other things in this mad dash effort to uh, get our needs met. Yes. But those holes can only be filled with him. Only he can make us whole. And what's more, only he can make us holy. It was never Sugar's job. It was never social media's job. And so we ingest and we ingest and we ingest. But have you ever noticed that no matter how much you scroll through social media, you're not well rested. You're not ready to come back to your family with more grace and more love and more patience and more kindness. The fruit of God's spirit is only going to be displayed when we're ingesting Mm, more of him. He said, when you, when you abide in me, I'll abide in you. When you abide in my word, when you gobble up my word, you're going to, you're going to bear the fruit of my spirit in your life. But when you gobble up uh, sugar or you gobble up social media, which is a Mm -hmm. a different kind of sugar altogether, you you don't ever get satiated. Really, you only get more hungry. And I think Mm -hmm. that our problem isn't that we, that we have a sugar problem or we have a social media problem. I think at the root, Monica, we have a God problem. We've stopped going to him in our stress, in our loneliness. And we've been in a really hard year. (laughs) We've been in a really hard year and we're coming near the end of it. So how do we want to wrap this year up and how do we want to start 2021 different? Mm -hmm. Right. No, I love all of that. And I mean, if, if I'm honest, I think of the mornings that I get up and my heart's desire is to spend time with God. And yet There's something that I have to check real quick on the phone maybe, right? And all of a sudden, 20 minutes in, I'm scrolling and I just feel this yuck inside because I'm like, wait a minute, this is the only quiet I have all day and I'm wasting it. And yet I know that these devices, I know that these apps are made to pull us in and to addict us. And so... I think it's it's something very real that needs to be addressed because we can't be in denial and say it doesn't affect us. I think most of us across the board. So talk to me about the difference then between a detox and a fast. Yes, I, I will. Absolutely. But I just wanted to say that in your show notes, I hope that you'll you'll add a link to the social dilemma on Netflix right now. Yes, it really yes, yes. talks about how Our social Mm -hmm. media has not evolved accidentally. It has Mm -hmm. been engineered very specifically to not just trigger those dopamine releases that make us feel temporarily happy, but um, it it really gets us wound up. It keeps feeding us the things that we know that they have discovered that we are addicted to, and it gives us more and more. So there's that. But also in your show notes, I want to encourage you, Monica, to put this link, link them to Jeremiah 2, verse 13, okay. it says, For my people have committed two sins. They have forsaken me, the fount of living water, and they have dug for themselves. They've, they've hewn for themselves broken cisterns that can't hold water. And I think that's what I've discovered with social media and with sugar and so many other things, but specifically with social media. And you were talking about those early morning hours I used to. Before I had children, I would wake up and I would reach over on my bedside table and grab my Bible. Mm. 
Mm-hmm. Uh, or I would slip my hand under my pillow. And I oftentimes kept my Bible under my pillow and I would oh. literally rest upon it at night. Uh, and I would slip my hand under my pillow and I'd pull it out. And I would just keep reading from where I left off the night before. And that was my habit. That was my go-to. That was the, that was how I I started my day and it carried me through my day. And I mean, not always without stress or without complications. We will have problems in our day, but I knew where to turn when the problems arose during my day. Mm -hmm. And then I got a phone and it was a flip phone, but I wasn't flip flopping between my my (laughs) young children at the time. I mean, it was closed. It wasn't buzzing, ringing, pinging. It was shoved down in my diaper bag. And my husband would even get upset at me because I never heard his calls. And I wasn't right. wanted, but then something happened when I got a smartphone, smartphone. It's like, it wasn't so smart, you know, it outsmarted mm. me. And yeah. suddenly my time, my attention was being diverted. And when your attention is diverted, your affection is divided. And you know, these, these things we call devices, they are mm. divisive. They divide yeah. us mm-hmm. from the Lord. They're distracting us from him. They're distracting us from our most intimate relationships in our home, but also the people that we're in line with at the grocery store. I mean, there are so many people and things they're dividing us from. We think we're connected online, but really we're disconnected from real life. And so the subtitle of the book and of the challenge itself is exchanging online distractions for real life devotion. And now back to the question you asked me. <laughs> yes. What's no, that's difference? all so good. That's all so good though. I, that gives us such good context. Yeah. So what is the difference between a detox and a fast? I think a detox will help us, um, you know, kind of break up for a while. Mm-hmm. Like it, maybe it's a break and it feels good and you feel healthier. Yeah. yeah. And I'm not suggesting that you need a forever break up. But a fast means that you are fasting from social media in order to grow social with the Lord, get social with him. And then from there with the real life flesh and blood people right in your home. So you're, you're laying down those distractions, not just to feel better for a short season, but to grow in devotion to the Lord and the people he's put in our lives, not just our family, not just our closest circle of friends, but the people we encounter in our in our neighborhood, uh, the people that we encounter at the grocery store. One of the yes. things that I've learned to do during the fast is keep my phone, uh, obviously, put away during the time I re- run into the grocery store. I think you've heard me say before, Monica, that I want to one day write a book called Grocery Stories. Like just all of <laughs> the like awesome interactions I've had in grocery stories that are that are that are like gospel opportunities yep. to share the okay. love of Christ and even the truth, the truth of God's word with people when we're not distracted. And yes. so often I'll go in there and maybe I got my phone out because it buzzed or notified me, or maybe because I have on my notes, my shopping list. But then I just like, I'm, I'm in line at the, at the butcher's counter and I'm looking at social media instead of being available to, to the people right around me. And when I put it away, it's amazing how that becomes a a barrier to the gospel in our homes and out in the world. Yes. Oh, I couldn't, I couldn't agree more. I see it happening right in my own life all the time. And I do challenge myself occasionally to just put it down. And then you look around and you're like, but everybody else is staring at a phone. I know that is hard. It's tough. You have to like cough, get their attention, <laughs> get their eye contact somehow. Yes. Yes. Or, or, you know, we've got, we're talking to moms, so maybe they have on their own phone, the ability to shut down everybody else's, you know, you can do that from like the parent's phone. If you have, if you're yes. all connected on the same, um, like yes. iPhone system. So I know that that's, that's an option too. Hey friends, I hope you're enjoying this conversation and there is so much more yet to come, but I want to pause here real quick to thank this episode's sponsor, which is the Good Book Company. Now I love what the Good Book Company is all about. They create and publish biblical, relevant, and accessible resources that will encourage you and your church family to keep going, keep growing, and keep sharing your faith. Now I'm especially excited about a book that is absolutely perfect for this holiday season. It is called A Better Than Anything Christmas by 
Barbara Rioche. And this is available wherever books are sold, but I'll be linking to it in show notes. And I really want you to go to show notes so you can see a picture of this book. It is absolutely beautiful. It's one of those books I just get excited to pull out for the holidays. It is an Advent devotional for the whole family. And there are journaling pages that make it really special. And then if you have more than one child, you can go to thegoodbook.com and get extra journaling pages so everyone can be involved. I think you're going to love it. I think everyone should check it out this Advent season. So be sure to go to show notes and find out more about A Better Than Anything Christmas by Barbara Rioche. And now we'll get back to our interview. I'll just confess right here publicly that I have not actually taken a you know longer term fast. I've taken days off of social media, but I have not officially taken a 40-day social media fast. And I think that there's probably others like me out there who might justify that by saying, yeah. oh, but I need it for work. It's part of what I do, whether you're a writer or have some other business. I would love for you to tell us what it was like the first time you did a social media fast, what you learned from it, and maybe something that might encourage some of us to just you know, nudge us yes. to go for it and give it a try. Yeah, that's a great question. And I've got a two-part answer. The first is, it's just encouragement that even if you work online, even if your ministry to, to moms or to your family is mostly online, even if it's the only way you can connect with your grandchildren, you can do this. And maybe if you work online, the question needs to be, okay, what is what is the scope of your work and what do you need to get your job done? And maybe you need a half an hour in the morning and a half an hour at night. Or maybe you can schedule those posts for 40 days ahead of time. Or maybe you can say, uh, no, uh, my algorithms are going to get all wonky and I'm going to lose engagement, but it's worth shutting down altogether anyway. Yeah. So yeah. there are ways to do it. And at the beginning of the sugar fast, I say, listen, this is not a diet. I'm not going to tell you what to eat. I'm not going to tell you what not to eat. I'm going to ask you to take the details of this fast to the Lord. And I do the exact same thing in this. So if there are details you need to take to the Lord because you work partly online, and for you, it might be, goodness, I'm addicted to email. One of the one of the creators mm. of um, social media platforms that they interviewed in that Netflix social dilemma show said that his main addiction is email. So it's not just mm -hmm. what we consider, sure. uh, you know, Instagram, Facebook, Snapchat, TikTok, yeah. there are other right. things as well. So if you've got to be on email, okay, well, what's that going to look like? Again, can you do a half an hour in the morning and a half an hour at the end of your work day? And then if you can figure out the, the boundaries of where the work fits, then you can figure out what the boundaries around what the, all the extras are that you are actually laying down for 40 days are. So there are different ways to do this fast. So that's the first part is just to encourage you that, I love that. I love even that. if you can't do it, you can do it. And I would say, if you tell me yes. you can't do it, you probably need to do it. And then the exactly. second part yes. of this answer is really what you asked me, which is what, what surprised you, Wendy, right? That's what you asked me. What, what was surprising? Mm -hmm. What was your mm -hmm. response when you actually did it? And if you've done a sugar fast before, then you know that the, the first week is really awful, <laughs> right? Like you can get headaches right. and you oh, can feel yeah. lousy yeah. and grumpy and emotionally stressed because you've been self-medicating for so long. However, I find that when people find out about the sugar fast, they quickly say yes, and then it's hard. And on this mm. one, this one, they say, uh, I know I need it, but I don't think I can mm. do it. But when they do it, the first week is instant relief, instant relief. Like you don't have the headaches. You, do, I mean, you, you keep picking up your phone, forgetting, and it's like, oh my gosh, I can't believe how much I pick up my phone. Right. And I'm so glad I took it off my, my social media apps off my phone because I would open them up just mindlessly. Right. I hear that all the time, but so many people say almost immediately. And I would say even the couple days leading up to the fast now each year, and I fast during Lent each year, but I start getting excited in the days leading up to it because it's almost like this virtual vacation I'm going to take. And I get, I get excited about it. But the uh, first couple of days sure. of the very mm -hmm. first one, I found myself, it's so goofy, Monica, but I was walking different. I was like swinging <laughs> my arms at my side. And what I realized was I don't have anything <laughs> in my hands. 
And I was walking different and my eyes were lifted and my head was lifted. My kids saw my face more. I saw their faces more. Everyone's behavior sort of changed because they had my attention. They didn't have to get my attention. So those are some of the, some of the things that I noticed in the early days of my fast. Wow. That's, that's good stuff. And I know I try to take one day off each weekend from, you know, general use of my phone, but especially social media. And and I find the exact same thing, even on that one day where I'm reaching for it. And then I'm like, Oh, nope. (laughs) And there's this lightness, there's this lightness. So I'm sure if it's a longer term, yes, it's, it's really beautiful. And so talk to us more about how this affected your marriage, your parenting. Did you see a change in the family unit? Yes, I do. And and that's one of the reasons why I'm so careful to set boundaries when I return is, you, you know, when you do a, let's say a sugar fast and you get to the end of it and you're like, wow, my sleep was so much better and my joints feel better. And I was emotionally more in control of myself and I didn't struggle with depression and, 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 right. Well, we have all these benefits that we experience when we are, when we're offline and we're living our real life. You know, we're spending time with the ones we really love and not all those we like, quote unquote. Yes. <laughs> and so there are all these benefits. So before we get off the fast and back on line, figuring out what do I want to do going back? Is this going to be a permanent breakup? Was it just a break? And if it was just a break, how am I going to go back? And I, I feel like finally the phone's off. God's throne, you know, as the main thing that gets my mm-hmm. attention and my affection. Yeah. So how am I going to yeah. keep him on the throne? How am I going to keep my kids more of a priority than all of the people that I kind of turn to when I'm feeling stressed with my parent in parenting and stressed in my marriage, because I don't return to them um, more able to cope with family stress So where do I want to turn? What did I discover during those 40 days? And what am I going to do differently? And one of the big things that I learned to do, I used to say, okay, when do my kids need me most? And I'll put down my phone, right? That sounds like a really smart thing to do. And I Mm -hmm. thought, hey, look at me. What a good choice to make. Yes. And I try to get my husband, let's do this together from dinner time (laughs) until bedtime. Let's put the phones away. And so what I'm about to suggest, Monica, sounds exactly the same, but it's the opposite. Instead of figuring out when you're going to put down your phone, figure out the times when you're going to pick up your phone. Like I said, it sounds like the same thing. It's a game changer. No, it's it's huge. I see. Yes. So in the morning, I one of the things that I try to encourage the boys to do as well is the word before the world. So I don't pick up the phone to see what's going on in the world, around the world Mm -hmm. wide web people in the whole wide world until I've spent time with the one who made the world. Mm. And so I open up the word before the world so that I'm not picking it up until after that. And not just like opening up and I read the verse of the day, like I want to have time with the Lord before I have time with others. And sometimes it's hard because I know that I have an email from you telling me, uh, you know, here's what's going on with our interview at 1130. And so right. I want to teach you, but before I want to know what Monica says, I want to know what the Lord says before I want to know what, you know, if the kids schedules need to be. And when my meetings are with their online teachers, I need to know, I need to get in line with my heart in line with the Lord. And yeah, so that's one of the ways. And then also just throughout the day. Okay. When do I need my phone? If I said I need to be online for 30 minutes in the Mm -hmm. morning and 30 minutes at the end of the day, when are those going to be? If I need to check my email, if I need to have the phone close enough that I can hear it ring for phone calls, okay. Does that mean I'm always, I have it in my pocket? Can it be plugged in somewhere where I can hear it? Can I keep the phone down and choose times to pick it up rather than Mm -hmm. the other way around? And those are just some of the boundaries that I've set for after the past. But I'll confess you guys, it, the pull is strong. It is real. And I need mm, probably mm. more than an annual 40 day fast to keep myself regulated. Mm. Sundays are good. Yeah. I try yeah. like you, I try to make it a weekly day, but it, it's something that we need to return to time and again. Well, I, I totally agree. And I think all the more so because this is so new to us who are, you know, who didn't grow up with technology and social media, I believe that 
it's so new to us that we need to set limits for ourselves because we we just don't know how this is affecting us, our heart, our relationships, our future. And so I think all the more so we need to be diligent, just like any other area of life that we set boundaries and set limits for. And I just love that. And so you typically have done the social media fast for Lent. Is that right? That's right. That's when I choose to do it myself. It fits into my my online life and it fits into my family life. So that's been a good one for me. Right. And so what are some other times of the year that you would recommend or that you hear of other people doing the 40 day social media fast? Yeah, that's a, that's a great question. I would say the first answer would be drop your, your ballot (laughs) today and then (laughs) log off. (laughs) Like right now it's a really great time. You know, if you order the book today, God bless Amazon prime, you'll have it in, in two days right now, given what's been going on at the, the online sphere and atmosphere has been Mm -hmm. so negative and so aggressive. I think we're all worn out. And Mm -hmm. so now's a great time. Mm -hmm. The the days leading up to Christmas. I was going to say 40 days ago would have been a good time. (laughs) Yeah. 40 days ago would have been a great time. The days leading up to Christmas really, really is a wonderful time to get offline. If you decide to, Mm. during December, pick up the Bible and go through the book of Matthew, you'll read one chapter a day. You'll read all Mm. about not only his birth, but Mm. his life, his death, his resurrection. And that really is, you know, the the topic Mm. of this podcast is where do we turn when we're struggling? And let's, let's practice during this Mm -hmm. time turning. And every day in the book, there's a scripture and we talk about turning to the Lord lifting our eyes, lifting our heads, lifting our hands, <laughs> being available to to grow mm-hmm. in devotion to him and the people in our totally. lives. But let's also, those scriptures that I share, that's just to whet your appetite. We talk about ingesting, like what, mm-hmm. what are we consuming? Consume more of the word during this time. So the days leading up to Christmas would be a great time. Lent is a great time. Um, summer is a wonderful time. I don't know if you've noticed, social media usually takes a dip in the summer because people are so busy, you know, during summer with their, with their busy family lives. And I, one of the things that I've noticed is I'll take a picture of our fun. I'll take a picture of the sunset or, you know, the umbrella in your drink or whatever it is in the vacation. And then I'll spend time, beautiful, uh, precious time putting together a string of hashtags. And that, that moment (laughs) that I captured, I'm missing all the moments that follow. And so Mm -hmm. what if moms, we say, I'm going to share less. I'm going to experience more because we miss Mm. much when we share much. I really think we do. So summer is a great time. Mm-hmm. Oh, I can't, I'm thinking New Year's is a great time. Yes. Fall is, I mean, really, there's no, but I, I think this, and this, I want to circle back to something you mentioned a moment ago, and I think that can help guide us too in the best time to do a social media fast. But that is that you touched on how it's really a heart issue. And I love that you do not make this a religious or legalistic thing. I love that you say in both the sugar fast and the social media fast to bring it before the Lord. Because I think that if we do that, we're going to hear from him what it's supposed to look like. Uh, and he is sensitive and thoughtful to the things that we're responsible for. I don't think he's he's trying to be a killjoy or, or make us lose our job or responsibilities, but he's going to speak to our hearts on the things that we really know are getting between ourselves and him or ourselves and our loved ones or the people in the line at the grocery store. And he's also going to guide us to the best time to do a social media fast. And I think that just coming to him and asking him is really the key. And I also just want to say before we wrap up, because I've kept you long enough and people need to go vote, (laughs) but (laughs) I turn in their ballots. I just want to just mention, even if somebody listening doesn't think they have an issue with social media. Maybe they're hardly on, or this isn't an area that they feel is a distraction in their life. I'm just going to say, because I had the chance to read this book in advance, that the devotions themselves are so completely beautiful. They are so applicable to so many things in life. I'm going to say whether or not you think you have an issue with social media, this book will speak to your heart in a really special way. God might use it to bring to your attention some other area even that you didn't realize was a distraction. But I just believe that you did such an incredible job of writing these chapters of 
weaving the scripture and the heart of the message so beautifully. I just want to thank you because it's really touched my heart in a special way, Wendy. Oh, thank you. I, I appreciate that, Monica. And I just want to affirm what you had encouraged people to do, which is bring the details to the Lord. Right now, I'm reading through the book of Joshua. And Joshua is about to lead them through Jericho, around Jericho. Yes. And yes. I love that lesson because uh, the angel of the Lord appears to Joshua and gives him specific instructions. It's not mm. some legalistic, hey, every time that you fi- yeah. you face a strong enemy, a strong hold in your life, and isn't that wall a strong hold? Mm. Um, but in this one in particular, I've got specific weird, seemingly weird instructions for you, but you're <laughs> yes. going to see the walls come down. And I think mm-hmm. that we're all experiencing stronghold in our lives where yeah. this, where this social media and other things as well are. And if you bring them to him, he will speak details. He will personalize it. Jesus was a person. And so when you invite him into your personal struggles, he will personalize what this mm-hmm. fast should look like. Mm -hmm. which I just love so much. And I think the enemy would love to stop us from doing this by making us think it's got to be some religious legalistic duty. And instead, I think what you so beautifully do is invite us into that relationship. And, And God is so kind and so gentle and so loving that the first day that you open this book and read, you're gonna go, oh, this isn't everything I feared it would be. This is actually a beautiful deep dive into a deeper relationship with our Lord. So Wendy, you've done a incredible job once again. And of course, I I will link to and encourage everyone to read the other books you've written as well. But I think this social media fast, you know, God knew well, well before you knew or I knew that it would come out in the year that it is coming out, that it would come out on election day. There are so many little pieces that could be nothing but the hand of God that has designed all of this. And I just smile thinking while you are working on these chapters, you didn't even know, but he knew. So I think it's really special. Thanks, Monica. I appreciate that. For sure. Well, for anyone that just wants to follow what you're sharing, um, I I think you do some, you arrange some of your social media in advance, right? Because that might be a question people have. If they're following you on Instagram, they might be thinking, wait a minute. I see her on social media. Why don't you just give us a little a little insight into how that happens? Yeah, I actually, um, a couple of years ago, I started working with a VA who I'll send her a document that has the quotes and the content that I want posted. And we have a, we use Canva for creating those graphics mm-hmm. and we've got um, a, a template set up that she can just plop them into. And it's sure. not... It's not that it takes so many hours of my life to prepare them ahead of time. It's just one of those things that I can delegate and free myself up to be more present, Mm. whether it's with my people or, you know, writing books. And then she'll schedule them all ahead of time. And then I choose the times where I will, I'm willing to pick up my phone and engage online rather than Mm. being online Mm -hmm. all day. Now I still have the temptation. Sometimes I'll get out of the routine and I'll find, Oh my goodness, how in the world was I online for four hours today? I mean, I'm just saying (laughs) that does happen. And then I say, you know what I really need to do? I need to reel it in again. And if I'm running that much to being social online, can I see that I'm not available socially with my people and with the Lord? Mm -hmm. And Mm -hmm. so it's an ebb and flow for me, less than it used to be, but it still is. So that's why I say sometimes we need them. And during this 40 day fast, I go entirely offline. I'll, I'll schedule those 40 posts that are all about social media. And all I do in the content is say, I'm offline. These were scheduled ahead of time. Would you consider mm-hmm. taking a 40 day social media fast right. too? So right. it, it's not very engaged because most of the people that follow me are offline. With me. <laughs> but it is there in case people come across that. That's, that's a really unique situation you face, but I think it's you've weird. handled it very well. <laughs> you've handled it well. And um, I just, I love everything you do. So where if people are online before yeah. they do, they begin their fast, can you tell people where they can find and follow you? Absolutely. You can find me at Wendy Speak. I think it's all lowercase Wendy underscore speak on Instagram and Wendy Speak uh, on Facebook as well. Yeah, I I hope to quote unquote see you sometime when we're not both fasting. Right, right. And your website home base, wendyspeak.com, right? That's it. They can find out more and all the links to where they can find you at your home base. So yeah, and I do have I do have additional resources for those Mm -hmm. who want um, want them screensavers for when you're fasting. Mm -hmm. I love it. Beautiful. One of the screensavers just says, "Follow me," 
at mm. Jesus. And that's like my favorite one because sometimes all the people we're following getting are getting in the way of us just following the only one who said, yeah. follow me. So follow me. grab those at 40daysocialmediafast.com. Oh, good. Yes. Excellent. Okay. And we'll link to all those as well. Well, Wendy, thank you for your time. Thank you for this beautiful book and all the things you do to encourage and inspire all of us. Appreciate you so much. Of course. Love the boy moms. (laughs) God bless. Take care. Okay, friends, I hope you enjoyed that conversation. I hope you're inspired and encouraged. And yes, you can find links to that book and anything else that Wendy and I mentioned over in show notes, which are always at monicaswanson.com forward slash podcast. And you can find this at episode number 79. Thank you so much for being a part of this podcast community. You guys are awesome. I adore all of you. I did want to say thank you too for the feedback I got from my Q&A episode. I really appreciated hearing from you that you enjoyed that. And yes, we will have future Q&A episodes and you can always email me your questions or your comments comments, your suggestions for future guests or interviews at aloha at monicaswanson.com. So feel free to stay in touch with me. And guys, I appreciate it so much when I see you sharing this podcast on social media. If you put it in your Instagram stories, you can just take a screenshot, put it in your Instagram story and tag me at monicaswanson underscore. I love to see those and I always reshare them if I catch them. Okay. So thanks again so much for everything. Have a wonderful rest of your week and until next time, aloha. Aloha.